without wasting any more time, I want to invite our next guest speaker, Andy Sykes, who is a former British National Party organiser. He got involved with the BNP when they uh, canvassed the area where he lives in Bradford. Um, within weeks of joining the party, he realised uh, this, uh, this mistake he had made and contacted his trade union for help to stop the BNP in Bradford. Um, Andy now works basically on projects nationally to educate young people uh, on the dangers of racism and extremism. He works with the schools, colleges, universities, youth services, councils, police, detention centres and prisons. He's also a Home Office approved interventions provider. So without any further ado, I'd like to invite Andy Sykes to the, uh, to the podium and uh, present the topic on the uh, far right extremism. Wow, what an intro. Um, um, where do we start? Um, well, you, you just heard a little bit of my background. Um, I am a former BNP organiser, but it's not as bad as it sounds. Uh, I spent almost three years undercover. Um, I stayed in the party and uh, tried to um, warn people uh, exactly what they were getting involved with. But um, in the last five or six years... Um, I've worked on lots of projects around the country around um, racism and violent extremism. And recently, I've seen a massive rise in violent extremism, right wing. And uh, I'm not if, uh, well, I don't know if you're aware. Last year, I believe we had about 18 extreme right wing terrorists in prison. I've had the opportunity to work with um, a few um, former terrorists and um, it's not really talked about in the media. You may, you may see a story, but um, could anybody name any extreme right-wing terrorists that we have in prison now? Can see any hands going up? Can anybody? David Copeland, the London Nail Bomber. Any others? John Davidson. John Davidson. Yep, yeah, he's local to North East, yeah, Air and Strike Force. Um, I could name a dozen, but it's not out there in the public. And yeah, I've found more and more, If, for instance, if um, which I've witnessed, if um, I've worked with a young Muslim guy, if he downloads material that's likely to be useful to terrorism, will know his name because the media puts it straight out there um, also I just want to make people aware that in front of me I've just jotted down on a post-it note over a dozen extreme right wing groups that are active now I say extreme right wing not far right the BMP's far right National Front's far right because you can vote for these groups, you can elect them into positions of power. So extreme right wing, um, it's growing. And um, the EDL have been mentioned. What category would we put the EDL in? Anybody? Extreme. Extreme. Because of what they say when they're on the marches and demos. The domestic extremism desk at the um, Scotland Yard put them in the far right category. I, I'd like to put them in a different category altogether, but I'd probably get kicked out of here for saying that. Um, some of these groups that are active, right wing resistance few guys in the British KKK. Has anybody heard of a group called National Socialist Movement? We're going back in history, yeah? 
It's Alive and Well, based in West Midlands. Now, I want to just mention this. If, if a guy is involved with a group that's got an ideological belief system that could damage this country, it'd be seen as quite dangerous. And if he travelled to another country, received weapons training, then came back to this country and started to peddle his, his nonsense, should he be taken off the streets? Anybody? Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a guy active in West Midlands running the British National Socialist Movement who did that. I collected all the information and he's still walking the streets. He's recruiting in this country a white extremist and we don't know about it. Well, we do. I've reported it. I've gone to relevant people. But extreme right wing is on the rise. Back to the English Defence League. Um, if I went out into the high street now, <coughs> me by myself, and started walking down the high street and started chanting and saying things about prophets and about religion, being absolutely violent, disgraceful, there's a good chance that I'd be arrested. And yet, when you've got a thousand people walking along, doing exactly the same, they're not arrested. There's, there's something wrong there, and that needs dealing with. Um, so Norman Bettison is the former chief constable down in um, West Yorkshire. Just a few years ago, he made um, a press release statement, and you, this is open source, you'll see it on the uh, internet. And he stated that the largest all of weapons and explosives have been found in the homes of far-right extremists. It's a fact. But all the focus is on people like Anjum Chowdhury. And the shocking event in Woolwich, um, well, it's, it's made history. A British soldier has been murdered on the streets of London, and the backlash, it's not even peaked. Um, soon, Lee Rigby's funeral, it's, it's coming up soon, and, um, and I think there's going to be another, it's going to be a massive backlash. And I want to mention some of these extreme right-wing groups the EDL is classed as far right but the splinter groups that have come away from the EDL they've gone straight into the category of extreme right wing North East Infidels, North West West Midland Infidels but also the CXF Combined X Forces and I can tell you now CXF frightens me to death combined ex-forces there's some guys former military they're a bit ticked off with probably the government they're not happy with things in this country but these are professionals these guys are trained to the highest standard with weapons explosives they don't need to download things on the internet these guys they've got it all up here and in the next 18 months 5,000 military personnel being forced into redundancy. Um, they'll be back, coming back to places like Newcastle, Bradford, Leeds, Oldham, Burnley. And they've got, um, they've been conditioned, I'd say. They've been to conflicts and they've been conditioned in a way that's not good for their, their health. Because when they're coming back to this country, they've been conditioned in a way that this is what your enemy looks like. And then when they come back to this country, they're going to see people who may look like their enemy, where they've been fighting, they've not been debriefed properly. And some of these people are getting involved with extreme right wing, and we don't know enough about it. It's not out there in the public. Now, I'm not coming here to scaremonger, I'm not coming here to frighten you. Um, I believe it should be a, an even balance we should hear about both sides of extreme or all forms of extremism. It's got to be like that, and it's not. Um, there's um, a little story. I just want to mention this. Just after the London bombings, 
Um, I was going on a train journey, and um, as I was getting on the train, um, it, it was a rush hour, so I thought, well, I'm probably going to be standing. But um, as I got onto the uh, carriage, I could see that there were um, quite a few seats. So I just squeezed through, um, and there were um, a young Asian guy sat there. Bear in mind, this was just after the London bombings, and um, he was sat there, and I thought, wow. And I looked back, and all these people were standing up. But he had the biggest rucksack I've ever seen. Um, yeah, you can laugh now, but but just after the London bombing, some people obviously thought, I'm not sitting next to him. And this rucksack, honestly, it was huge. It were in front of him, and I just sat down and said, you all right, mate? We got talking, and it were only a 20-minute journey. But I was so embarrassed because... You know, young Asian guy, rucksack, London bombings, and all the people who were stood up, they're all white, and they did this. If that were a bomb, regardless of where they sat or where they stood, so they might as well sat, sat down, you know. It's all right to laugh now, but I was so embarrassed, and we got talking. He was in his third year um, as a sports teacher, scientist, and we got talking, and we knew exactly why nobody would sit down. And he said, I would just wish that, you know, somebody had asked what's in your rucksack. It was uh, a full week's worth of washing, his sports kits, and in the top, like a square box, he said, that's leftover lunch. But I think he were embarrassed too. But, you know, we struck up that little 20-minute um, friendship. But it's not happening people, we're looking at the news and um, like Abdul mentioned, I've, I've met Abdul down in Luton, I've worked down in Luton it's not good in Luton and actually I was down in Luton when I got a phone call from a, a friend in Bradford and he said, oh Andy he said, um, could you come round to our school, I need you to do this, blah blah blah, I said I'm sorry mate, I said EDL are marching in Luton and I'm, I'm doing some mediation work and he went, you're down in Luton he went, you want to be careful. Well, I giggled coming from Bradford. Um, that he, he said that. And, um, and yeah, things are. You know, there are tensions in Luton, but not enough people are talking. They're just picking up on media stories and perceptions and ideas and listening to what Anjum Chowdhury has to say and Tommy Robinson. Um, we need to do hell of a lot more. Hell of a lot. Otherwise, things will... They'll get worse. And, and please, please, be aware that there will... Uh, and again, I'm not scaremongering. After, or coming up to Lee Rigby's funeral, drummer Rigby, I think there'll be a lot of tensions. And we're coming up to summer. We'll have a lot of young people um, who may be vulnerable to extremism. And that's on all sides. And we need to keep a close eye on that. And, and again, I want to mention um, also, far-right extremism has no religious foundations. It's a totally different ideology. The um, so-called Islamic extremists, they're using a skewed um, version of Islam. But all the extreme right wing that I've worked with, it's based around um, a fudged ideology, uh, Nazism, Norse mythology... Um, all sorts of stuff. Some of these guys actually believe that they'll have um, um, a, a spiritual um, reckoning. They, they believe that they'll go to a place called Valhalla um, and they'll sit with Odin and Loki and um, Nazi generals Adolf Hitler. Some of these guys actually believe that and that's their belief system. And we have to remember, people like Anders Breivik, he had a perception a belief system, his perception that Norway were being taken over by Muslims and that the Labour government had sold out to that. So acting on a perception, he went out and did what he did. One person. There's been people in this country with similar ideas and by sheer luck they've been caught. Um, Neil Lewington, um, far-right extremist, um, bit of a loner, bit of an oddball. Um, he urinated 
on a concourse at um, a train station. He got caught, police looked in his bag. He had components that could be made into improvised explosive devices. When the police searched his house, he had a bomb making factory and a little notebook that he'd created called the UK Waffen SS Handbook. Sheer luck that you were caught. Um, Martin Gilliard, East Yorkshire, he was being investigated for um, child pornography. Again, police went to his property, sheer luck. They found ready made nail bombs and lots of extremist literature and diaries. So there are people out there, and by sheer luck they've been caught, but I've, I've got an awful feeling there's people out there who've not been caught and they're waiting for an opportunity. We can't, we can't wait for that. We've got to talk, we've got to start working, and, um, and it's got to start with young people in schools. We've got to talk about issues, give safe spaces. And I'm working with so many young people who say, oh, I want to join EDL, I want to do this. Um, why? Oh, well, Muslims are killing us and taking over. They're not getting the opportunity to, to talk in school. As soon as they mention EDL or BMP, oh, you can't mention that, you're a racist, be quiet. If they've got real issues to talk about, create a safe space, let young people talk. Otherwise, we'll push them towards that sort of stuff. That's any, you know, do you know what I mean? We've got, we've got to do it. Um, and like, I never dreamt in a million years that I'd end up doing this job. I started off life as a stone mason, a stone carver. I never dreamt, you know, that if it hadn't been for me actually joining BMP, I would have never been doing this. And um, I'm not, that's not, um, you know, don't go join BMP. Cause, um, yeah, I made a massive mistake, but I believe I put that right. But I had issues. I was being told certain things, you know, I almost bought into that, but I think I had the good sense to research everything that the BMP told me, and then I could put that right. But there's so many people out there who are willing to peddle lies, and if we don't investigate it, then, you know, there'll be too many young people going down that route. Um, earlier on, somebody mentioned David Copeland, um, he, he was the, or is the London nail bomber, and there's a, been um, quite a bit of research done around uh, lone wolves or lone actors. Um, I, I'm not sure if I believe in that because David Copeland were a former BMP member, so it was like a transition. He went somewhere, got information, then he went somewhere else, and eventually he went onto internet and he downloaded. It was a transition until he got everything he needed to build his bombs. So I don't, I don't really believe in the lone wolves. You've got to go somewhere to get information. Um, and we've no idea how many people out there are doing that. Um, another guy, Mark Tover, he had lots of uh, weapons readily available on internet. If you know where to look, you can buy things and, and um, the, I don't know if it's black market, but there's weapons out there. And with um, an extreme right-wing ideology, people are getting hold of these things and um, committing serious crimes. Um, what I would say, I mentioned the National Socialist Movement. Far-right extremist, he is recruiting, he's using the internet and he's visiting places around the country. Um, Groups like this need dealing with. Now, I love this country, and I love the free speech, I love freedom to demonstrate, I love so much about this country, I don't ever want to live anywhere else. But when you've got people who are doing what he's doing, then um, we need to shut him down. Because I've worked with a number of people who've been recruited by him, who've gone out and committed crime. They're the ones who suffer, not him. He's smart enough just to stay within the law, just, but that needs dealing with. Um, and I want, I want to make, or point out, I'm not sure if it's the right words this, but is the EDL a gateway to far-right extremism? 
are people turning up at EDL events um, wanting something else and then hmm, this is not quite right for me then they start researching and going to other groups um, down in Luton I actually witnessed um, Tommy Robinson leader of the EDL and, uh, and Kevin Carroll his uncle I actually witnessed them um, getting the police involved to remove um, four guys who had combat 18 badges and national front badges and they said oh we don't want these racists or fascists at our event that really confused me um, probably for the cameras maybe but I, I actually witnessed that so I can't deny it. I saw that happen some racists were kicked out of that event um, I don't know how long the EDL will exist um, but hopefully it's um, got a short lifespan but depending on I think we're going to have a long hot summer and depending on the events leading up to Lee Rigby's funeral and after Lee Rigby's funeral um, I think it could be a, a good time for right wing to recruit BMP they're almost um, non-existent but as a um, as a new party has um, been spawned from BMP there's Andrew Bronze who's a member of the European Parliament Nick Griffin's partner in crime so to speak he's created a new group and he's taken at least half the BMP membership but he's also willing to take other people into that group and we need to see uh, how long have we got one hour <laughs> um, so we need to see what happens this summer and uh, on that um, I think I'll stop because otherwise I'll go on to another page but um, yeah I'll be around for questions so thanks for listening thank you